morning, everyone. Moo. See? Got up when I said moo. Just good, okay, okay, up. Good morning. He's like, bye, bye. I got plenty enough sleep last night. Got unloaded first thing in the morning. I like to say 7 a.m. sharp, but it is Camp Tega. Okay, the place is called Tega. We call it Camp Tega. I was the only truck there. The first truck. The only truck. So you would think. Yeah, it'd be pretty efficient. No. No. I was surprised how quick I was in and out for that place, but still not quick. I got up at six in the morning to make sure I was ready to go just in case they opened the gate early. They opened the gate like seven, ten. It's like, you guys open at 7. Why is the gate opening at 7, 10? Walk to the door, that's still locked. It's like, the office. It's like, other guy goes, but is that still locked? I'm like, uh-huh. Hang out there for five minutes. Oh, someone comes and unlocks it. Sign in, put down my phone number. And you hear somebody in the background going, can we just get that sucker in here? Somebody in the back wants to unload me already, but the politics up front make it so... So delayed. It's one of those places you can't pull into because they don't have any space. So you gotta pull along on the road, come sign in, give the phone number, and drive away and park somewhere else and wait at a truck stop, wait to be unloaded. But since we we're the only one there, we just stayed parked on the road. And it can take many, many hours, three, four hours just to get in there. So it was fast, considering that I was the only and first truck there. That's why I got up six in the morning. I wanted to be the first truck in there. Forklift driver was that violent? Oh, Just that it felt like like earthquake in the in the truck. <laughs> Whole truck was shaking all over. I didn't notice that, but I wasn't in the truck either. I was outside with a broom sweeping as he was unloading. So yeah, not bad considering, not bad at all. Should get, and we didn't get a load there, so I was wrong about that, but I did, was right, we're headed down to Klasnikov. So we should get to Klasnikov around noon. So running empty all morning load at noon and then head home and our dispatch has changed originally it was a Klesnikov to Richmond run now it's a Klesnikov to Griff run oh Richmond run was tarped and Griff was not tarped nice nice we're getting home an hour earlier thanks to that yeah hour earlier. $70 less. We're $70 poorer because of it, but I get home an hour earlier. Sure I think that, that hour is worth 70 bucks this weekend. Sure Ooh, sure. big rocks. Big rocks. <laughs> Saw those at the last second. <sighs> Like big sharp rocks. Make sure Scotty knows what. Yeah, make sure that uh, the forklift driver loads the right load onto me because they've changed my dispatch. So we're on Highway 33 southbound, right at the Big White intersection. Why 
low, but he's not super heavy. He's moving at a decent speed. A lot of pallets, probably to put the load on, lower the load onto the pallets. Alberta plates on the guide vehicle on the Alberta plates? Yeah, it's usually switches. Yeah. I think some stop at the bo at the province border, but some cross. I guess I should be back in that lane. Uh, leaving Kelowna along this highway, three uh, police officers were following each other. Three cars in a row, which goes, they're setting up a check stop somewhere along this highway. We'll see if we run into three red and blue bears. Yeah, It's one of those highways that you're really in the middle of nowhere. I mean, a valley over that way, there's lots going on. A valley over, there's lots going around. But for some reason, Kettle Valley is pretty darn dead. No cell phone service. Two small little towns. I guess there's another three small little, maybe villages. But between Kelowna and Rock Creek, there's really nothing here. It's very much wild land here. Not crazy scenic, it's got lots of trees though. No lakes. Wonder why that's, or wonder wonder if that's why it's so dead. There's no big lakes. <laughs> yeah, there's some small little lakes, but no Okanagan Lake, no big beaches, no tourists. There's no no tourists here. It's a nice change having a wilderness run. Don't see a lot of wildlife either, though. Yeah, see a moose once or twice, deer once in a while. Never seen a bear down this way. I'm sure they're around. Um, quadding up in this area, we've seen cougar and a moose. Um, driving up to Big White, we've seen moose there a couple times, so there are moose around. When we saw the cougar in the quad, we just hit the brakes and stopped and watched what it was doing. And it's like, okay, it's just wandering across the road and headed on its own way, so we'll do the same. Didn't think much of that one. Especially since the quad's so loud, I'm, it's not going to approach us. It would, there would have to be something really special for a cougar to attack you on a quad. West Kootenai District. There's a sign, wildlife corridor, deer and moose. 